Is Tom Nook really a bad guy? Now he's been railed on in the past, and it makes sense. He's the only one there to take your bells. He's been listed on multiple top villain of video games lists, not to mention the countless memes that look like this. Look, I get it. No one likes owing money. But does being the sole facilitator of the general cash flow really make him a bad guy? Well, fellow villagers, today we're about to find out. Placeholder introduction. All right. Ah! So the director of New Horizons has just labeled Nook in the past as being passionate about his business. And she's right. Tom Nook just wants to see you flourish and grow like a beautiful apple tree in two to four days. Personally, I see Tom Nook as more of a father figure. He actually might be better than a father figure. I mean, the last I checked, my dad wasn't giving me money for catching butterflies. Still though, a lot of people would argue that Tom Nook is pushing you insidiously into generating debt. But also, not really, because he's just making you pay for the services you order. He never pushes you into things you don't want to buy, and he never charges you for hidden fees. So, he's kind of like Amazon? I guess he's like a Amazon that doesn't oppose trade unions, or if use they didn't prevent publishers from edge, or customers from the richest awful world, tax conditions, the US, create a tax haven, bidding, bidding war, products, or their tax their website, okay. location. But beside those things, he's basically like Amazon. And speaking of business, for someone who's in charge of all the island's finances, he's not a greedy person. And to make it easier to contextualize how not greedy Nook appears to be, I made a bells to US dollar conversion rate. And to do this, I basically just took 10 random objects in the game, calculated the difference of price between them and their closest looking real life equivalent. I added all that together and divided for the average. And I found that vaguely $1 equals 42 bells. And this is cool because effectively it means in the real world, catching and selling one emperor butterfly can get you 160 68 bucks. However, inversely, I think it means that you should not become an archaeologist because if I dig up an entire Dunkleosaurus fossil, I better be getting more than 147 American dollars for it. Just saying. You know what, you better give this video a like because I had to do so much math for this. <laughs> Watch all of this be wrong. But still, with seven house upgrades available, so you end up paying about 5.5 million bills. But in USD, that's only $238,812. That's <laughs> a pretty great price. That gives you a two-story house with four rooms, a basement, and a customizable mailbox. <laughs> Never in my wildest millennial dreams. Imagine paying for a whole house with 1,422 butterflies. Call me crazy, but it kind of sounds like the world that Tom Nook is giving you is a freaking paradise. The houses even have plumbing this time. That's progress. So how could Tom Nook possibly be the villain? He's just doing what he can with what he has and then providing it to you. That's the American dream. And in America, you're not allowed to hate that. What's next? Are you gonna tell me Ariel was wrong for wanting to get plastic surgery so she can get in the pants of a rich guy with a boat? I mean, that was my interpretation, but listen, Tom Nook has this beautiful paradise that's rich in agriculture and expensive butterflies. Would a villain just give that to you? When has someone evil ever let you have all the apples you wanted? Actually, ignore that, because I just thought of two examples that would disprove that. But the important thing is that in the context of Animal Crossing, apples aren't villainous, they're nutritious. I think I just called God a villain. You know what? We're three months into 2020. Sounds about right. But back to my point, Tom Nook is just executing his job and there's nothing wrong with that. And let's face it, I've seen some of you guys hoard tarantulas, so who's the real psychopath here? Now, here's where things get a little spicy. I do find it interesting that there's no competition of business in the town. Sure, there's a shoe cobbler and a tiny clothes shop, but Nook is the one that built those structures in the first place. When you own everything as a monopoly, even the tiniest bit of loss is seen as failure. However, if you share a market with others while still maintaining the majority, you remain the dominant force while maintaining the image of healthy competition. And we don't know what kind of deal Tom Nook made with the other animals in order to initially do business. For all we know, it could be some kind of pyramid scheme. Listen guys, I've got a money-making freak on this island who's catching tarantulas like there's no tomorrow. Bring all your shoes and your triangle-shaped dresses because you're gonna make a lot of money real fast. All you have to do, sign here on the dotted line. Which brings me to these words. Cross-promotional, deal mechanics, and synergized revenue streams. Now, what's the significance of these words? Um, individually not much, other than when I say them all together, they make me sound super smart. 
but together they all relate to corporate consolidation. Like I said before, on the island there's nothing but Nook products, and we know that there's plenty of other businesses inside of other Nintendo games. For instance, Mario Kart 8, which also crosses over with Animal Crossing, displays multiple businesses throughout the game, along with its own travel company and commercial airline. But then in New Horizons, we all of a sudden have to use Dodo Industries, a company that exclusively takes Nook miles. So if Nook owns everything, then there's an impression of freedom, but in reality we are trapped on an island with no one but Nook to depend on, which ties us back to if Nook is a villain or not. Because I see two options. He is either a hyper-capitalist that's created a society that's dependent on him and only him, or he's a raccoon that understands that there is a fragile economy that's basically dependent on butterflies and time travel, and needs to confine your choices in a way that prevents your own downfall and society's apocalyptic collapse. Hero or villain, I think it's just best that we agree to not piss him off. But on a lighter note, my favorite thing to do when I have spiraled into hypotheticals is to forget about that and focus on something else. So, I thought it would be fun to share my newest music collaboration with Isabel. We've been working on this for a while and I hope everyone likes it. <laughs> uh, on that note, have a wonderful rest of your day. Stay safe out there. Have a good one, guys.